Let us pray for inspiration. Spirit of God, breath of God, we experience you right now as we experience our own breath. We breathe in and out, we breathe deeply, and this breath we know nourishes us and opens us, your breath intertwined with our breath, your life intertwined with our lives. Let your spirit, your breath, enliven, awaken us today, open our hearts so that we may hear the message that you have for us. Amen. I think it's pretty easy for us to get Jesus' point in today's scene from the Gospel of Luke. Love trumps religious rules. That's the point, right? Love trumps religious rules. That's what he's trying to say to the leader of the synagogue when the leader of the synagogue says, you know, you're not supposed to be helping people, healing people on the Sabbath. You're not supposed to do work on the Sabbath. And we know that Jesus has always said God's commandments, if you want to call them rules, all boil down to loving God and loving your neighbor as yourself. So uh, that's what they're all about, right? That's the purpose. And then he says to the leader of the synagogue, you love your donkey enough to untie the donkey on the Sabbath and lead the donkey to water. That's work, but it's love, right? Can't I love this woman who has known this affliction for 18 long years? Can I love her enough to unbind her from this affliction? We really get that. We, and we like it, generally. <laughs> Love trumps religious rules, especially rules about the Sabbath, because I, I think we tend not to really think that there are rules about the Sabbath. We don't necessarily take the Sabbath so seriously, maybe as seriously as people in Jesus' day. For them, it was a Saturday. For us, our Sabbath is the Sunday. Sunday. I mean, after all, on the Sabbath, we do our laundry we pay bills, we work in the yard, and if we have time left over, we might help somebody too. Bob might need some help sometimes. He's, his toe, his arm. Uh, when he was praying about affliction, I really was thinking of you, Bob. <laughs> it was a, an appropriate psalm for you to read. So that's kind of how we feel about the Sabbath. In fact, I think we really tend to have such little spiritual investment in the Sabbath that we might miss the deeper message of today's scene. So let's look more closely at today's scene. It takes place on the Sabbath. On the Sabbath. And we find Jesus on the Sabbath in a synagogue where he always is on the Sabbath. Always. You know, he wanders around the countryside helping and healing, all the things that he does. But on the Sabbath, wherever he's nearby, whatever village he's nearby, he joins the community of faith there. Sometimes he teaches and preaches, as he was doing in this scene today. Joins the community of faith to hear the word of God and reflect on the word of God, to worship God, to experience the presence of God. And I think especially to experience and share the healing power of God as he very dramatically shows in today's scene, very dramatic scene of the woman who walks into the synagogue stooped over and she's been stooped over for 18 long years. She cannot lift her head. She hasn't lifted her head up for 18 long years. And the people seem to attribute this to some spirit or Satan that has held her bound. And so you can imagine how she feels about that, aside from her physical pain, feeling like she's seen as having an evil spirit or Satan somehow trapping her. Imagine how she feels. Imagine how the people around her must look at her, too. Jesus says to her, you are freed from this affliction. 
touches her and she stands up straight and tall and lifts her head up high for the first time in 18 years. There's a powerful healing there in the synagogue, there on the Sabbath day. And maybe, you know, she was saying that psalm that we, we said, out of the depths I call to you, answer me in my affliction, relieve me from this suffering. Maybe she'd prayed that and, and here she knows that she was heard. Over and over through the Gospels, over and over through the Gospels, Jesus shows that one important Maybe the most important purpose of a community of faith is to experience and share the healing power of God. Healing. He mostly heals in his ministry traveling around, right? He heals so many people. And usually there, we hear about the physical dimensions of the healing, that someone was blind or someone couldn't walk or someone had leprosy. We hear about that physical dimension. But I think... The physical dimension symbolizes and expresses a much deeper dimension of healing. Jesus heals the faith of people who have stopped believing that God cares about them, that the faith community cares about them. They're forgotten. They're lost. He restores their hope. He restores their strength. He restores their joy. He restores them to the community of faith, connects them to this community of faith, and says, you belong here, and shows the community of faith how to reach out and bring people in, connect them to heal them. He shows them that. Healing. What if, what if we believed very deeply that one of the most important purposes of a community of faith, one of the most important reasons that we are part of this community of faith is to celebrate, experience, share God's healing power. What if? Then maybe we would race to get to church on Sunday morning, on the Sabbath, come to this sanctuary because we want to experience the healing life of God in our bodies. And we want to let God heal our broken hearts, our defended hearts. And we want to let God heal our troubled, fearful minds. That's what would happen run for this healing experience so that we, and this is what we would do, we, like this woman in the synagogue, would be able to stand up straight and tall and lift our heads up high and praise God. What if we believed that every single person in this sanctuary, every single person in our community of faith is in need of healing? Every single person here bears a secret burden, a secret pain, a secret suffering we don't even know about. Sometimes we share some of the things we suffer, but there are many things we don't share. Everyone here has a secret pain. I think if we believe that, we would come here with such compassion we would see each other in a new way, in a different way. We would reach out and want to offer healing to every person we meet in this place. We would want each person in this place to be like that woman in the synagogue, to be able to stand up straight and tall and lift their heads up high and praise God. And what if we believed that the work we do as a community of faith is the work of healing. Healing for all the families we host through the Family Promise Program over in Fellowship Hall. Healing of their sense of despair, maybe. Embarrassment, maybe. 
maybe a sense of worthlessness or failure, healing for them. Same kind of healing for the people that we serve at Interfaith Ministries in the food pantry and clothes closet. And then our work out there on our corner with all these signs and Jesus. The last Wednesday of the month, every car that passes by. And Ken Schroeder and I were trying to estimate how many cars do pass by. I was saying 500. He said, oh, I think it's a lot more than 500 during that hour. And maybe they have two people or more, so it's not just 500 people. Maybe it's 1,000 people that pass us by with these signs. And we're offering these messages of healing. Maybe they need healed from the hatred they experience in the world and the division they experience in the world. Maybe they need their hope restored that it's possible to love. That they can have conviction and the power of love, and they see these signs, and they see our smiling faces, and we're offering them healing. So they, and everybody that we serve in our ministries, can stand up straight and tall, lift up their heads high like the woman in the synagogue, and give praise and give thanks for their lives and for one another, for the world they live in. I think if, like Jesus, we could see ourselves as healers, if we could see our community of faith as a healing community of faith, that's what it says on the front cover of your bulletin, I think, right? A healing community. Then then we would understand why the Sabbath is important. (laughs) We'd get that the day that we come together as a community to be restored and healed and to be able to heal others, to know what our calling is, to know who we are. A wonderful day to celebrate. We would know that profoundly. And we would experience healing for our lives. My pastor, Cheryl, in Memphis used to say, there might not be physical healing, for everyone, but we can always find healing for our lives, the healing that we know we need. We would know that, and we would experience ourselves, the power that we have, this tremendous power to bring healing to our community. I think we experienced a little bit of that power yesterday, Uh, not just the power from us, but from so many people who held that middle sign up there that says Modesto stands united against hate. What wonderful words. How healing the presence and the witness of our church and other churches and other organizations and people to bring healing to our community. It's our calling. And I celebrate it. Amen. Thanks, Nathaniel.